a landmark lawsuit against the United States government brought by landlords was recently decided by a major U.S. court. And that decision and the reasons behind that decision are... This is the Landlord Advocates, where we help landlords become better landlords. I'm your host, Matthew Lyman. Welcome. The plaintiff in this case, Tiger Lily LLC, sued the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Centers for Disease Control based upon the halt on evictions. They filed this lawsuit in the U.S. District Court, Western District of Memphis, Tennessee. The U.S. District Court ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, Tiger and Lily LLC, and against the United States government. However, the United States government decided to file an emergency motion for stay pending appeal, an immediate administrative stay with the United States Court of Appeals in the Sixth Circuit. The Sixth Circuit is Michigan, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Ohio. There are 12 U.S. Courts of Appeals in the United States. In the description below, we list all 12 of those U.S. Courts of Appeals, as well as the states that fall into those 12. They are called circuits. There are 12 circuits. In the description below, you will find your state and what circuit court you are in in that U.S. Court of Appeals. The argument behind the United States government that allows them to have their CDC halt on evictions is Section 361 of the Public Health Service Act. Now that is codified under 42 U.S. Code Chapter 264. This allows for the Secretary of Health and Human Services the power to make and enforce such regulations as in his judgment are necessary to prevent the introduction, transmission, or spread of communicable diseases. It goes on further to give them the authority to, for the right of inspection, fumigation, disinfection, sanitation, pest extermination, destruction of animals, or articles found to be so infected, or contaminated as to be sources of dangerous infection to human beings and other measures as in his judgment may be necessary. Remember the phrase, other measures. Other measures. Now, when the U.S. Courts of Appeal look at a motion to stay in judgment pending an appeal, they look at four factors. Those factors are whether the state applicant has made a strong showing that he is likely to succeed on the merits. Remember that one. Number two, whether the applicant will be irreparably injured absent a stay. Number three, whether issuance of the stay will substantially injure the other parties interested in the proceeding. And number four, where the public interest lies. Whether the government is likely to succeed on the merits boils down to one simple question. Did Congress grant the CDC the power it claims? Now, the CDC under this order does have the power, the authority, to offer specific restrictions when it comes to property interests and liberty interests. The government asserts, asserts that a nationwide eviction moratorium is among the other measures for disease control that Congress envisioned when drafting the statute. The judges of this U.S. Court of Appeals issued a two-word response to that assertion. And that two words is, we disagree. Plainly, government intrusion on property to sanitize and dispose of infected matter is different in nature from a moratorium on evictions. Now, the U.S. Court of Appeals does go on in their decision citing statutes and acts and case law and a lot of legal jargon. We who have decided that we're not going to utilize that, we want to make this so clear and so understandable that all of you will be able to understand this. 
It's, it's too confusing with all that kind of stuff, trust me. It is. <laughs> it really is. Eviction is fundamentally the vindication of the property owner's possessory interest. The whole order thus falls outside the scope of the statute. The CDC, when they looked at this order, this 264 chapter of 42 U.S. Code, chapter 264, they added some stuff and made it fluffy and they extrapolated and they expounded upon and they did all of this other stuff that gave them what they believed the right to do what they're doing. When the U.S. Court of Appeals and the Sixth Circuit says the CDC could rely only on the plain text of 42 U.S. Code, Chapter 264, which does not authorize the CDC director to ban evictions. Given that the government is unlikely to succeed on the merits, we need not consider the other remaining stay factors. What this means, landlords, is that the U.S. Court of Appeals in the Sixth Circuit has examined the emergency stay order, or what they want in the U.S. government. They examined that. They looked at all the evidence. They looked at all the arguments. And they have decided, with all of that, that the U.S. government wholly lacks the ability to have their case stand on its merits. They believe this so strongly that they're not even considering the other three factors that will bolster the argument of their decision. That is clearly, clearly a sign to the United States government that this is unconstitutional. Now, can the U.S. government perfect their appeal and file it with the U.S. Court of Appeals and the Sixth Circuit? Yes, they can. Will they? We don't believe they will. Because if it is denied then, and the order stays from the U.S. District Court, the only other alternative that the U.S. government has is to take their case to the United States Supreme Court. We, and the landlord advocates, firmly believe that if this were to occur, the United States Supreme Court would rule that the CDC order halting evictions nationwide is unconstitutional. We firmly believe that that would be the decision of the U.S. Supreme Court. Now what needs to happen is this order stays in the four states that we, mi that we mentioned, Michigan, Kentucky, Ohio, and Tennessee. Other district courts, as we have seen in Texas, the U.S. District Court in Texas has also ruled that the CDC order is unconstitutional. Now, we do not know whether or not the United States has filed an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, or I'm sorry, to the U.S. Court of Appeals, trying to stop this as well. We're not sure if they did. And they did let us know. Let us know in the comments below. If they have not done so, they more than likely will not. So, unfortunately, it may take lawsuits across all 12 circuit courts of appeals to allow this to come in the United States. Now, our team has looked at this and has decided and has, has determined that when one U.S. Court of Appeals rules one way, the sister courts usually rule the same way. Now, when the Centers for Disease Control imposed this halt on evictions, it was based upon non-payment of rent, that you can't do that and they fall within certain guidelines. Now, if they're violating the lease or creating criminal behavior or safety of the property, those evictions can go through. We allude to this in one of our prior videos that you will see a link to that at the end of this video. If the United States government was so worried about the spread of COVID-19 across the United States, why, therefore, would this order not encompass every eviction in the United States and not just non-payment? Why? That in and of itself begs the question. So we can throw you out for reasons other than non-payment of rent. We can get rid of you, which will, in the CDC's eyes, possibly spread COVID-19 wherever you may go, even though you're selling grocery stores and Walmarts and, and malls and all of that. But they figure that with non-payment, that's no way. You're not going to do an eviction. It begs the question. But, Melos, this is good news for us. We just wish that the order and the decision came from the United States Supreme Court. Melos, you know we're here for you. We, you know that we are with you. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe to our channel. Share our channel. Leave comments below. You know we respond to them. And until then, 
for our next video, we ask that you take care.